Do bëjmë vetëm një orë, apo të dyja? Me që orë një parë, bëjmë që parë, bëjmë që parë, bëjmë vetëm orë në dy tanë, një dhe e mbarojmë. Bëjmë dojmë. Një dhe mund të dyja. So, no, sorry, second. So today we are going to see the linear combination. We are going to discuss the vector spaces and the linear combination. Now, uh, we uh, actually in the mo in the morning session we we saw how the how the vector spaces are defined and the vector spaces they had uh, a list of 10 different properties or 10 different uh, uh, requirements for a vector space to be considered one or to be considered such as a subspace now out of these 10 uh, properties you don't need to memorize all of them simply for the reason that uh, most of these properties they are properties which belong to the vectors themselves so we have associative rule under addition which reports that vector a plus b then plus c is equal to the vector a plus the summation of b and c okay so this is something standard like 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 1 plus 5 which is a 2 plus 3 so we can uh, group them whichever way you want so this traditional or expected properties which belong to the vectors in general and to real numbers those are listed among the 10 different properties of the of what the vector space could have but in our case, we said that only four of those, they were a little uh, different, where the major one, it was the following. Assuming that we have vector V1 and vector V2, they are uh, elements of the vector space V. Now, the first thing we have to check is the following. Check whether V1 plus V2 is uh, a member of the vector space. So we have to check this first. And the other one is to check whether zero uh, is uh, an element in the new vector space. Okay, so traditionally, this would be the most important uh, new properties, which are not explicitly uh, observed the same way, but which are not explicitly uh, observed. Now, we also defined in the previous session what the linear combination was. Linear combination of few vectors, we denote it like this. We say linear of V1, V2, and Vn, this is equal to alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 plus alpha n Vn. Sorry, what did I write here? X10? Maybe I should write it uh, alpha alpha alpha. I should write here V. So this is V1, V2, and so on. So these are the, the vectors. Now, let's see a couple of examples of how we can define, uh, well, we can also provide uh, the concept of uh, subspace. The definition of subspace is again is a non-zero space, vector space, or we can call it the non-zero vector space of, let's consider this one vector space V, such that such that uh, or includes addition and multiplication by, by a constant. Now, uh, this is what the, how we can define uh, as Wait a second. Give me just one second. Multiplication. Multiplication by a constant. By a constant.
Okay, so uh, apologies for just for this short break. So let me ask you the following. Uh, the matrix 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. What is this matrix? How can you consider this one? Can you give a few definitions of this matrix? It's symmetric. Triangular matrix. Symmetric, okay. Triangular matrix, okay. But what triangular? Upper triangular or lower triangular? Lower, lower triangle. Yes. So what about this one? That's an upper triangle. So this is lower triangular. This is also upper triangular. So this is symmetric, this is lower, this is upper. What about this one? It's an upper, upper. This is upper, okay. This matrix, this is also a diagonal matrix, this one. Would you agree with this? So this is diagonal, symmetric, and, and so on. And uh, what else? I think, yeah. So for example, we can observe the following. Uh, Let's consider this one, this is vector A, and this is vector, sorry, matrix A and B. These are matrices, not vectors, apologies. So we can see here, or we can say that A, or the set of matrices which look like, like A, they are subset of B, right? Because, because B is equal to an upper triangular matrix. So let's write this one like this, Q. And uh, at the same time, A, it is a subset of lower triangular matrix, right? Because lower triangular matrix, so C, so a lower triangular matrix, it can be this one, which would be the following one, minus one, three, minus one, two, three, zero, zero, zero. So this is lower triangular, but this one is a subset of this space. Would you agree with this? And at the same time, we can also state the following. The diagonal matrices, they are subsets of lower triangular matrix. Or because diagonal matrix is a special case of the lower triangular. Again, diagonal matrix is a subset of upper triangular matrix. What about this one? Would you agree that identity matrix is a subset of diagonal matrix? What do you say here? Can you see that identity matrix is a subset of diagonal matrices? Yes. Can see that. That's true. What about identity matrix is also an upper triangular? Which yes, is as, uh, it is part of diagonal yeah. matrix. Yes, because uh, that's, that, uh, the identity matrix is just a special case of the, of the diagonal uh, matrices. Okay. Let's see an example. Let's assume that we have a subspace, uh, a space S1, which is defined as x, x squared and uh, x0, such that x is an element of the real number of the space. And, uh, and we have another space, vector space, S2, which is composed of x, 2x, 0, such that x is an element of R. Now, the question is this. Is S1 a subspace of R3? Okay, so we are asking this question. So what is R3? R3 is a set which uh, in, includes a triplet of M entries, a triplet of, of numbers. And uh, what should we look for at this moment? We should uh, remember these 10 different properties which uh, space should satisfy to be considered a subspace. Now, of uh, R3 in this case. So what were the most uh, 
essential properties that we had to look for. Well, one of them, it was the following. We, we do they are closed before. under addition. Say it again. Are closed under addition. Closed under addition. That's true. So let's check that one. And then we also check whether the interchangeable. The addition is interchange interchangeable. Interchangeable. Okay. But those are the, actually the interchangeable. Probably you need this one. You have vector yeah. one plus vector two equal to vector two plus vector one. Yes. This one is it's it's a. By default, all vectors or all matrices do this. Okay, it's just two plus three is equal to four uh, is three plus two. So we are not talking about these, but we said before a while in the, the beginning of this session that uh, what is very tricky is to look at the whether whether it is closed under addition, whether it is uh, allows the vectors to be in the same space when we multiply them by a constant, and the third one was also to check whether the zero vector was an element of S1, okay? So let's check like this. So in this case, how can we do the analysis? If we have here for, uh, for a moment, let's assume that we have one, uh, we have three numbers, which are, where we have uh, x is equal to one, the vector v1 would be equal to one. 1, 1, 0, right? And then the, the other value, let's assume uh, x is equal to 2, and what is vector v2? 2, 4, 0, okay? And then what is uh, v1 plus v2? Three five zero. Which is not part of S1 because uh, 5 is not the square of 3. Uh, okay, so here we have 3, 5, 0. Yes. Now, is there. So let's assume we were expecting to have here z, z squared 0. So this element, we are good. But if 3 is equal to z, z squared cannot be 5, right? So it looks like v1 plus v2, it is simply not. So this one is not an element of uh, subspace S1. So what do we say here? We say that S1 is not a subspace of R3. So based on the check of these three properties, we say S1 not subspace of R3. Now, we have this other, uh, have this other vector space, S2. S2, let's, let's do the same, let's use the same, uh, no, let's do it like this. X equal to 1. This means that V1, so here we're checking for S1, and here we're checking for uh, S2. So V1 is equal to, 1, 2, 0, okay, and then for x equal to 2, we get v2 is equal to 2, 4, 0, 2, 4, 0. And now, adding these two together, we get v1 plus v2. Is it 1, 1, 0? Yes, it's 1, 1, 0. Okay, we're back. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah, there was the resolution is a bit low. Yeah, there was a network was a little uh, weak. So, so the question is this: We did v1 plus v2. We get these numbers, and now we ask the question: Does this vector satisfy this condition? What do you think?
So this yeah. one. Yeah. Okay, so we say that S2 is a sub subspace of R cubed or R3. Okay, so this is uh, what we should be uh, checking for. In fact, we could also uh, check the other, we can also control this other property. So, we, but we did only this analysis for the moment. So for the first case, since the first condition did not, uh, was not held, we excluded this immediately. We said S1 is not a subspace because even the very first one was not satisfied. So far, we have tested only the first property here. What about the alpha B1? Is it an element of, uh, of actually in this case for S2? So <coughs> if we have here, uh, or we can write a general uh, vector, not one and two, but A, So let's assume that we have another vector, which is a, 2a, and 0. So the second condition, it wants to check whether alpha a, uh, 2, so alpha, sorry, this is alpha 2a, and 0. I believe we can write, uh, we can write this one as, this is alpha a, and then we have 2 alpha a and 0. So it looks like even if we multiply any vector, which is as general as a, 2 a, and 0, if we multiply by any constant alpha, we can simply observe that the, the, this, sub, this vector space, it is closed under multiplication of a vector with a constant. Okay, so the second condition is also satisfied. What about the third condition? Is 0 an element of this subspace. It is, right? Because we can have here 0 and 2 times 0 is 0. So 0 is an element of S2. It is also an element of S1. So this can be equal to 0. But S1, as we showed before why, we did not have, the, this one was not satisfied. But now when we came to S2, all of these three properties are satisfied, so we can conclude or we can uh, clearly state that the S2 is a subspace of R3. Okay, and then... Well, now we can define, we have a new definition. So these were, these were some examples of spaces and subspaces. And this is not all, we're going to see a few more examples. But let's give a, a new definition, and the definition we want to talk about is the null space. Null space of matrix A. So, uh, let's, let's see for a moment what is null space. We know that whenever we have a system with linear equations, we express it as Ax is equal to B, and we call this one the non-homogeneous Equation, right? Non homogeneous. But when we have Ax is equal to zero, then this is the homogeneous expression. On a homogeneous uh, equation of Ax is equal to, uh, to zero. Now, the question is we can uh, try to remember the following. A, A, it can be written as M times M, right? X, it is M by 1, and this would be equal to a vector B, which is M by 1. Okay? And uh, in this case, the null space of, uh, wait a second, the null space of A, it is defined, it is the set of solutions N A. It is, it is a set of solutions that satisfy the homogeneous expression, that satisfy this one, okay? So in this case, what can you say, what is the, 
the null space of A, is it a subspace of Rm or Rm? Rm. N. N, right? Okay. It is Rm. Because uh, x is uh, n times 1. Uh, that's correct. Okay, so we're expecting uh, a, a combination or a list of numbers of n numbers that constitute a vector that if we multiply a matrix A with the vector, we get the, the zero. So this null space apparently <laughs> the null space it, it can be considered as following. So this is the domain and this would be the range. And uh, the null space of A it is a set of numbers which is like a plane here where all of them they are projected to the zero on this space. So all of these values which are here, if we transform them with a matrix A, all we get is, is here. Okay. We know that uh, the yeah, yeah, that's the case. So we have the null space of uh, of a matrix A, and uh, we also remember that. Uh, Sorry, this range, this was, okay, this is domain of the range. I thought this was the city here. And again, this zero vector, apparently, this can be, is in the range of A. Of uh, matrix A. And uh, what we can, what we can observe is that, uh, assume for a moment, if, if we are going to get here a zero, which this, is, which this is what we are expecting, imagine for a moment, and that uh, how can we write, so let's give an example, like uh, uh, 1 minus 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, minus 1, 1, 0, and uh, we multiply with three vectors. Let's, let's consider this x1, x2, and uh, x3. And this is going to be equal to 0, 0, 0. So how do we get this 0, this one, this middle one? How do we get it? Can you help me? So how, how do we get this uh, element? So I can roll uh, multiplied by x1, x2, x3. So minus x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 0. Thanks. Okay, that's good. So I'm starting here to get the second 0. Okay, let me write it like this. To get the second 0, what do you do? You said that we multiply row 2, okay? We multiply with a vector x. And we get 0, right? At the same time, we can also say that the first 0 here it's equal to row 1 times vector x. This is also equal to 0. Which, in principle, it looks like the row space. So what is x? If this is equal to 0, x is all the possible combinations of, the, of numbers uh, in R3 that uh, when we multiply them with these rows, we get a 0. So, what do we say? <coughs> so, it looks like uh, that we, we can call these, they are orthogonal, okay, they are ortho or normal uh, vector spaces. So, it looks like any row, let's, go, let's consider this one, Ri, where i is not fixed, it can be a row 1 to row n. If we multiply this with the, with the null space, this is going to be equal to 0. Okay, so we kind of uh, uh, got this result just by simply uh, using the uh, little bit of intuition, but in principle we can say that row space of A times the null space of A is equal to 1.
So we can consider that. Yes. You have a comment? Is it inner product of X? It is. Not inner product of X. It's the inner product of any uh, of any element, any row of A times uh, any vector in the null space of A. Because AX is equal to zero, it can have it doesn't always have a single solution. It might have many solutions. So you could have a line, and uh, any point on this line, if you multiply it with the rows of A, you might get zero. Does it make any sense? Or is it uh, clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, then, so this is what we can say about the null space and the row space of, uh, of A. So we can call orthogonal spaces the row uh, rows of R S D. Row space of uh, of A, maybe it's A. Now, let's see another example. Let's assume that we have a plane P in R squared, which is described by x plus y minus 2z is equal to 4. Okay. So, if you have a look of, of this, of this uh, relationship, x, y, and z, so what is this plane? This plane is composed of a triplet of numbers x, y, and z, which are uh, member now for sure since there are three. I mean, I don't think we can uh, we can say that this is true because any triplet of numbers there belong here. That's that's okay. And then, if the x, y, and z satisfy this condition, we can we can also say that satisfy this. They are also part of this plane. Okay. Now the question is is the following: Is p a subset of R squared. So we can ask this: Is this plane P a subset of R? Sorry, R cubed. This is a question. What can you say about this? Well, we can <coughs> we can try to write the plane on a vector form. Yes, we write it in a vector form. Like what? We, we check if the sub the subspace defined by the vector form is part of R three. Okay, you know, let's do it. That's correct. We can also we can write it in, in vector form by giving a general uh, definition. With a general definition, we mean that we write this expression like a vector form. But at the same time, we can also do the following. Can you uh, identify one point which satisfies this condition? Let's find V1. 2, 2, 0. That's great. 2, 2, 0. Yes. 2, 2, 0. This is a point which is uh, of. So this is in R cube for sure, but this is also in plane P. Can you tell me a different vector V2? <coughs> That satisfies this condition too. 2, 0, minus 1. 2, 0, minus 1. That's true. This is also an element in B. Now, the question is so, this is not, we have not answered this yet. And what should we do? The first one, we can check the following Is V1 plus V2 an element of plane B? So let's try to, uh, to check that. V1 plus V2 is what? It's 4, 2, minus two. 1. It's 4, 
2 minus 1. Now, which is equal to v1 plus v2. Now, does this equation satisfy this expression? Or it does. Plus uh, 2 minus 2 times minus 1. This is equal to to 4. This is 6 plus 2. Sorry, 6 plus 2. This is 8. So it looks like it doesn't. Uh, you said it does, but probably I, I was wrong. Can you check this again? So we have 4 plus 2. It's 6 plus minus 2. Minus 2, 4. Yeah. But this is minus 2 times minus 1. Okay. Yes. yes. It so does it, this way. So it looks, it looks like this one is not a point in the plane. Okay. So. Uh, so it looks like uh, we can answer this with a no. But uh, similarly, I can ask you the following. Uh, does this plane pass through the zero? It doesn't, since we have a free variable, a free number. Yes. Four. If it were like uh, x plus epsilon minus 2 z equal to zero, it would pass from the origin. But in this case, it doesn't. OK. Thanks for your answer. So 0, 0, 0 would, be, would give you 0 plus 0 minus 2 times 0. This is a 0, which is not equal to 4. OK, so we, we say here no. Now, if p does not include the 0 vector, this means that uh, this cannot be a subspace. Okay. So once we have a, 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 a combination of triplets, or quadruplet, or pentaplet, or five numbers, or six numbers that have a specific property, uh, the first thing we can also do intuitively is the following. Let's check whether the 0, 0, 0 entries satisfy the given condition or not. Okay? If they don't satisfy the condition, this looks like a candidate which can never be a subspace, right? So, I think uh, we, we look, we check the first property. If we ended up uh, producing a no, so we say that it is not, where is this no? We say P is not subspace of R3. Okay, now can you find uh, a plane? So, this is a plane, right? Can you find a plane? Uh, that looks like this, but passes through the origin. Instead of equal to 4, we should make it equal to 0, and that's all. That's true. P1 can be defined as x plus y minus 2z. This is equal to 0. So here, the normal vector, what is the normal vector here in this, uh, in this plane? It's one, one minus two. Minus two. So in the equation of the plane, the coefficients x, y, z, they are the normal component, which means that if this is the plane, the normal component is this. Okay, so it's or you have the plane here, and this would be the normal component, and these numbers, we look at the coefficients in front of these numbers. So it looks like this is uh, how can I say? This is uh, another plane which includes a zero. Now, the question is, again, similarly, we ask the following question. Is P1 uh, a subspace of R3? Okay, so we can check this again, and... Uh, it is not part of R3, we just we checked it before with uh, V1 plus V2, and the result uh, wasn't part of uh, P. In this case, it isn't part of P1 either. P1 okay. is different from P. So. Uh -huh. so here, we have a plane which is constrained to pass through the origin. So at least the zero is in there. The major question immediately, uh, which we, we could ask ourselves, is the following. If we have a vector V, uh, plus zero. 
Yes, that's true. We can answer zero. It looks like zero is part of this plane. But does minus V or is does is 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 a better question. Is minus V an element of uh, P1? It is. Uh, let's check. So because we know that zero times something equal to zero, and uh, if we were to do like minus x minus epsilon plus two z equal to zero, yeah. we would. It's the same as if we were uh, trying to check minus v. Oh, you are saying to do this minus x minus y plus two z? Yes, I mean like if we have a vector v with components x y z, minus v would be equal to minus x minus epsilon plus 2z, which would still be equal to zero. Yeah. You are right. Okay, that's a good approach. That's an intuitive approach. So we can also ask this. So 1, 1, 1 satisfies it. 1 plus 1 minus 2 is zero. Similarly, minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 is so apparently this is also true. So zero is part of the set. But we can also ask whether the multiplication by a constant satisfies the same uh, addition. Most probably it does, because here we have x plus y minus 2z, we can also have the following. Uh, a constant c, let's multiply by c, we have cx plus cy minus, minus 2z, this is equal to 0. I believe we can simply divide by c and we get x plus y minus 2z, this is 0. So they cancel out. So since this satisfies the, if this is a part of P1, then this is also a part of P1. Or uh, x, y, z being in P1, P1, this implies that also cx, cy, and cz, they are also in uh, P1. So it looks like this plane, it is a subset of uh, <laughs> it is a subset of, of the R3. So, uh, then we have just done a vector that satisfies uh, being part of P plus zero, uh, and then uh, go with that. Uh, sorry, can you repeat it again? I tried to follow, but... So we find a vector that satisf satisfies the conditions, and then just do vector plus zero. Well, if you do vector plus zero, it's going to be the same vector. So uh, this is like uh, one of the properties. If you if you remember from the previous session, we wrote like ten properties, and now uh, zero plus a vector is always a vector. Okay, that, that might not be enough. Okay, uh, was I clear or what you were exactly asked? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I believe I, I tried to answer this, but. Uh, we observed in the previous case where we added two vectors and the result was not uh, in the in the plane where this is actually this is one of the examples because we had also this x x square and zero so that was another uh, case which uh, the moment actually when we had the example of x x square and zero those expressions they are quadratic okay so they are not most probably they are not going to obey to some linear relationships because they themselves are like x squared, x cube, and x four. So that one might be uh, can be disconsidered completely. Now, when it comes to the definitions, few definitions of the of the spaces of a matrix. So apparently we have the null space, right? We have uh, what was the other one? We have null space. We can also define the null space. So for any matrix A, which is M by N, this has M rows, right, and the N columns. Now, then we can say that the row space of A is equal to the linear combination of R1, R2, up to Rn. And the column space of A, so this is how we can denote it, this is going to be equal to the linear combination of column 1, column 2, and column n. Okay, so these are uh, two spaces of, uh, of let's say, 
uh, of a specific matrix or of the components of a specific uh, matrix. Now, this is all the fundamental information which comes, which uh, we learned from uh, from chapter five. So, we have the null space. We have the wait a second. So we check uh, carefully whether the zero is one element. And now we can see a couple of, let's see some, uh, some examples. If you like, we can have a short break. The, are you pushing further? Oh. 